Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back. So really quickly before this video starts, I want to clarify a couple of things. The first thing being that this is a continuation of my daddy issues video. So if you haven't seen part one yet, I would definitely recommend that you watch that first because this isn't going to make a whole lot of sense if you don't. So if you haven't seen it yet, I will link it in the description box down below. The second thing that I wanted to touch on was how many amazing comments and DMs I got from you guys sharing your stories with me and telling me how much you could relate to my experience. I got told that that was exactly what some of you needed and I'm so happy that most of you perceived my message the way I wanted you to. However, a couple of people reached out to me who I think might have missed the point. In part one, I talk about my experience with my dad from when I was a baby up until my last encounter with him, which was about three years ago. I shared that as a child, I felt like I was never good enough and that I felt like my parents' divorce was my fault, but I don't feel that way anymore. Those feelings of guilt, loneliness, and being unsure of my worth were all things floating around in the mind of my younger self. I let myself be vulnerable for that video because I know that there are still little girls out there who are going through the same thing that I went through. And I want to let them know that if they feel like it was ever their fault or they feel like they don't matter, one day they're gonna come to find just how priceless they are. I shared how I use YouTube as a creative outlet because if you're going through things like a breakup, your parents divorcing, depression, anxiety, you need to find a, an outlet, a way that you can free your mind from all of those things. Another thing that I wanted to address was how emotional I was in that video. First of all, <laughs> I'm a very sensitive person as it is, but when it comes to something that I've struggled with for that long, I believe that it's only natural and I think it should be expected that it'll kind of tug on my heartstrings a little bit. But I want to let you know that those tears do not symbolize anger or hatred that still linger in my heart. Although I want nothing to do with my father, I made the decision because I'm an adult now and pretty soon I'm going to be starting my family in a couple of years. And I don't want someone that's toxic in my life like that, regardless if the same blood that flows through his veins is the same blood that flows through mine. That's one of the biggest lessons I've had to learn is cutting toxic people out of my life and I promise that if you learn to do that too, you'll be so much happier. I think I touched on everything I wanted to clarify, so I really hope that you guys enjoy the rest of the video. Hey guys, so I finally wrote that letter to my dad and I printed it out like 30 minutes ago. I have it right here in front of me. It's a two-pager. I wanted to read it to you guys because it's a good feeling to just open up about things that I've always stayed silent about. So I'm gonna read the letter to you guys because I feel like maybe some of you could benefit from it. It's been a few years since we've spoken, so I'm not really sure what to say. Let me paint a picture for you first. A baby is born. She's growing up in a world where monsters are only in cartoons. Her family isn't the slightest bit wealthy, but that's okay. What's money to a child anyway? As she figures out her interests and passions, she starts to look for inspiration from a role model. Her mother is hardworking and affectionate. Her father, on the other hand, is absent. She's confused. She takes a look at herself in the mirror and begins to question the girl staring back at her. She questions her worth. She questions her potential. She questions the father that does not need her the way she wants him to. As she grows older, she realizes that monsters don't only exist in cartoons. Rather, they take the form of demons that live inside of her head. It's no secret that you were not the best father to me. I'm sure your neglect stems from issues you had when you were growing up, and I'm sure it wasn't your goal to hurt me, but you did. The emotional scars you inflicted on me growing up are now wounds that I do not wish to ever reopen. I haven't spoken to you in years because I've been trying to speak to you my whole life. Trying to get you to understand me and love me was like I was screaming at you from a soundproof room. I don't know if it ever occurred to you, but I needed you. You had so many opportunities to be a father to me, but you passed up each one. You made everything about you and couldn't see my heart break each time you ignored me. But I need you to know that I'm done needing you. My entire childhood was based on confusion. At first, I didn't know why my mother left you because things seemed like they were going fine. But now that I know what real love is, I know that you did not obtain the qualities a lifelong partner should have. I know you weren't there for her because you weren't there for me. I know you didn't put her needs first because you were always selfish with me. I know you didn't love her like she deserved to be because you couldn't even give that to me. There's a statistic that says, the more involved a dad is, the more successful his children will be. Whoever wrote that hasn't met me yet. I used to be this girl with anger and hatred in her heart because I didn't get the childhood I deserved. Boo hoo, 
Sad story. My future is far greater than I can even imagine. I used to be sad because you were missing out on all my accomplishments, but it should be the other way around. You missed out on raising the girl who's gonna change the world. Damn, do I feel sorry for you. I want you to know that I don't wish bad upon you. Instead, I hope that you make the best out of this life you've created for yourself. Here's a life lesson for you. You may be reading this and reflect on all the shitty things you put me and my sisters through, but don't let that define you either. Take responsibility for the pain you've caused us and try to learn from it. Try to work on yourself and improve who you are mentally and emotionally. Every day, work at trying to be a better version of yourself. I guarantee it'll do you some good. This is probably not the outcome you had anticipated, but it's the one that's best for me. I've lived my entire life without you and to let you back in would be a major setback. You see, the thing is, when you decide to have kids, they attach themselves to you because you are from the same blood. But what happens when that child isn't loved back by their parent? Their self-esteem and confidence levels drop. Problems like anxiety and depression arise. Trust issues begin to control the way they interact with others. I've experienced all those things and I could never let you have that kind of power over me again. That's it. <laughs> I am honestly pretty proud of that right there because I was able to say everything I needed to say without being rude or disrespectful. I think I carried myself pretty well and I think that that shows. So I'm going to give it to my mom tomorrow and she can give it to him and I guess I'll never know what he has to say but that's okay with me because I'm really happy with this ending and... I think that I did really good. So now that all that is over and I shared my story and I have let go of my past, I wanted to say that this has been a very therapeutic experience for me. Even just talking to a camera, sitting down, talking to a camera, because I know that there are people on the other side of this that are gonna be watching it and that need me to be strong for them or they need to hear my experience to help better theirs or whatever the case may be. I feel like I did my job. And whatever you take from this, I hope that you know your worth and you know that you're good enough. And if you are struggling with a parent, mom or dad, or just a family member in general, just a friend, anyone who is is toxic and he was hurting you take the time to have a conversation if you can have a conversation with them sit down and pinpoint the problem and figure out how to solve it together if you're in my situation where that's not a possibility then take time to talk about it with someone with a family member a friend anyone a camera even I know that I wasn't able to confront my dad face to face or over the phone but this is good enough for me this is like me putting everything to rest. And I can actually truly say that I feel more at ease. I don't know what it is, I just, I feel better about it. And I hope that if you're in a similar situation to me that you can do the same thing and let go of the things that hurt you, let go of your demons, let go of all the bad things in your life and finally learn to be happy. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for being a part of this little journey that I went on. I don't even want to ask you to like and subscribe, but it's my job. So <laughs> hit that like button if you like this video. Subscribe to my channel for new videos every Wednesday. I feel really good. I feel really happy. I know that for a long time I wasn't able to say that. I wasn't able to come to terms with it. But once you do, it feels so much better. So, thanks for watching. As always, I love you very much, and I will see you on the next one. Bye.